Hey guys, welcome back. We just got back too from uh, our trip to the Northern Territory in early May. So this is a part two of our um, garden and how we found it. We got in this morning at uh, 6 a.m. on a very cool and foggy and cloudy Melbourne. And now... What time is it? 11. Uh, it's starting to clear. Looks like it's going to be a sunny, beautiful day. So, what did we find? We found a lot of fejoas down the driveway. Mm. It's fejoa season. So, time to do some harvesting. So, before I do the harvesting, we're going to check out the, uh, the trees and see how they did. Not the ones that are covered. We're going to do a separate video on the trees that are covered because that'll take up too much time. That's the uh, the jackfruit and that's the um, wax jambu. And this here is the Glen Mango, which is 10 years old. And that doesn't have any concern now for cold. It's It's gone over the threshold. Usually it's around the five, six year mark in Melbourne before you can leave mangoes uncovered in um, winter. So now this is like completely on its own. It doesn't matter what, what the weather is like. Even if we get below zero, which we almost, almost never do, even if we get a minus one, this tree is good to go. Yeah, so you can see a lot of new growth up there, which has been coming for the last month or so and over here too yeah so that's the uh, the glen and now the fijoas wow they've been dropping like crazy just touch them and they fall off right <clears throat> we've got a lot to pick up a lot look at this look at this <laughs> you know that it's um, the season, right? So what I'm going to do is just leave that there and I'll pick them up once I'm done filming. Yeah. See how easy it came off? You're meant to just let them fall or shake the tree. Uh, and not not pluck them for ideal ripeness. Okay, so here we have the um, mango seedling rootstock that was under the, under the um, ca um, carabao Manila mango, and I, I see the first signs of cold damage, even though it's in full sun all day. See the yellow. Four, the, the four leaves at the top are yellow and the one here underneath so it's already getting damaged before winter even comes in here I have a acerola mandarin oops nearly stepped on a fejoa another fejoa here this one finished this is an uh, March April variety so they're all done we have a mango in there we have a mango here. This is the seedling, Kensington Pride. I'm surprised that the new growth hasn't been destroyed by the cold mornings we've had. In here I have a yellow papaya and another wax jambu. And you can see the damage already on this leaf that's not protected. Let's have a look. Yeah, inside it's all green. So, damage and damage on that there. So, you can see it. It's obvious, right? <clears throat> then we have a cherry guava, which started coming at the end of March. Mmm. Nice. Wow. Really sweet. Oh, my God. These are so sweet. It's crazy. Mm. 
well, I can't believe we still have a wonderful um, pomegranate from my neighbour left. Wonder why the birds didn't get it. Hmm. And it looks like the bigger one up there is still untouched. I'm not sure. Here we have another mango, the Florigon. Hmm. Looks like we're going to have a beautiful day of around 18 Celsius. These are uh, dwarf Cavendish in pots. They're looking pretty good considering the lows we've had. Temperatures between 3 and mm, 9. 3 and 9 at night. Um, in May and even in late April so definitely into the sing single digits now every day ha have been for the last um, couple of weeks okay the um, Hachiya persimmon it's dropping its leaves it's got that autumn look one of two mangoes that I planted at the end of summer the um, um, Kensington Pride seedling looking pretty good I don't see any damage yet from cold yet uh, maybe because there's a ash tree above it right the ash maybe hmm That's the uh, carob. You've already seen that. It's still, it's still flowering. Doing a lot of flowering. Um, the Maya lemon. Hmm, I'm surprised to see the the red papaya. Hasn't got any cold damage yet. Very surprised. This is another persimmon. It's the Shuruga. Um, it hasn't uh, dropped its leaves yet. They're not even they're not even red, like the uh, Hachiya. So, two persimmon trees looking completely different. Two different cultivars, right? Blood orange already starting to turn three years in the ground all citrus in uh, Melbourne is no problem that's the other Kensington Pride seedling mango in the ground also not showing any signs of cold damage well sorry yes it is that leaf there is and that one two two leaves but I'm being very picky, right? I'm being very, very picky. Oops. I see four leaves, five leaves up there that have got slight winter damage, cold damage. It's the, sing the single digits, guys. Not 10 and 12, but 3, 4 and 5 Celsius will do that. But mind you, those um, 3, 4, 5, 6 Celsius mornings are only for a few hours. It's not like the whole morning or the whole night. It's like two or three hours. Um, and then we have, that's the Abiu. And I don't know what's going on with that. So don't ask me, I don't know. I'm not looking yet. <laughs> I, I don't, I, okay, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't think the Abiu, this Abiu will make it. Even though it's getting double wrapped, full sun all day in winter. You can see it's in the sun now. Um, it's not going to get waterlogged because the rain can't flow in, but the soil is um, nice and damp. Even though it's got all that, no wind hitting it, I don't think it's going to make it because it doesn't like temperatures below 5 Celsius. Um, so when it's 3 Celsius or 2 Celsius out here, in there, it can only be um, 2 Celsius higher. 
so it'll, it'll still be four or five in there and we get those temperatures for six months it's not like uh, six weeks if we had winter for six weeks of course the abu would make it <clears throat> all right this is the purple guava this is the complete opposite of the abu this can take minus 10 minus 10 celsius without a cover unprotected and look look what it's doing it's getting new growth <laughs> we had three celsius the other morning and what did this do it decided to shoot out to push out new growth completely different animal to him this is the the white one of two white cherry moyas this is a, a fig which i can see in there has got two beauties ready for us i can see them back there see those two guys yeah there and there might be even more than two hard to see so that's nice that's a nice little gift we've got sugar cane acting as a buffer barrier and pretty screen the carob which is getting up up and away like superman why wow, every day it's growing every day the carob is getting taller and it doesn't matter if it's summer or winter this carob tree is not prone to um, weather um, extremes it doesn't care if it's freezing or if it's 40 it just rocks on look look at this look at this new branch that just came in the last few weeks during the first single digit nights that's how this responded it responded with a new branch and how did the mango respond with yellow leaves see the difference between the carob and the mango okay Mexican guava nice looking very perky and green lemonade tree the red chatut um, ooh, soursop soursop how did you do with the three and four and five Celsius mornings dude how did you take it so let's have a look hmm I guess okay but he will need to be wrapped ASAP because we could get a zero guys we can get a zero um, overnight just out of the blue even though the weather the weather forecast won't um, know they won't know until the last minute so I'm gonna have to protect this guy soon like the next day or two or three over the next you know the second week of May before winter this is the Wilson white sapote and I can see we lost one and two uh, fruit that fell I bet there's a lot more that are ready to fall I bet there's a lot more that are ready to catch they always fall when we're away well <laughs> when we came back from Cairns we were home for a week right and not one fell ah, here's one it fell onto this onto this big boy this is ready so he didn't get a chance to fall because he was caught by his brothers so I bet you there's more if I go around the tree Wilson white sapote guys oh and we've got some um, wampy here that's starting to over ripen over ripen so these should be at their sweetest now we didn't get a good crop this year not much at all but the tree is growing I want the tree to grow it's been a dwarf forever I wanted to get like four or five meters high these are the trees I want to see get big not the freaking mulberry that I can't control I want to see the wompy take off I want the wompy to uh, impress me yeah so oh and here's the uh, black sapote seedling oh nice the fruit has finally grown not very big but uh, getting bigger every week 
and there's quite a few of them which is nice to see there's at least 20 maybe 30 black sapoti um, fruit and new growth so even though it didn't rain at all in the last two weeks whilst we were away in Darwin not a drop it's pushed out new growth I wonder how it did that so I wonder how it did that without being watered or rained on impressive mm. well I'm pretty happy to see that I was I was a little um, anxious about him being dried out but not 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 the case that's the new custard apple that I planted a couple of months ago um, looks like his new branch there was taken off and he's got a little one here too so it looks like he's getting established over winter um, variety name again is the pink's mammoth okay so what else Hicks fancy mulberry see I can't control these trees but the good news is I use them as fodder mulch for the other trees so problem solved right so grow all you want and I'll just keep cutting you back thank you right, let me put this down looks I think I see another one here uh, no not, maybe in a couple of days that one will be ready on the Wilson yeah all right we'll go and check all these out after I finish filming there's just too many to squeeze okay so the Hicks fancy we don't get to eat these because the birds are part of the 5 a.m. club and we're part of the 10 a.m. club mmm sweet <clears throat> so we miss them the early bird catches the mulberry at Fruitopia this is the Vernon wow what's going on in here this tree just turned into a into an Amazonian beast holy cow <clears throat> doesn't have any fruit but it sure has a lot of growth and a lot of flowers all right we'll see what happens with all that so uh, the Sun's come out it's warmed up a little that's the sapodilla which is looking good it's got a lot of uh, leaves that have dropped from the plum trees here which I plucked off my mesa podi it's doing great um, this is gonna need to be protected together with the sour sop uh, and canistel this is the next job I'm doing I just received some new frost cloth from eBay and we're gonna protect that one that one that one and that one so one two three four and the two mangoes that's six and we're gonna cover the the red papaya there and we're gonna cover this little mango the sweetheart which is still green no no cold damage yet but uh, the big surprise has been this white or dr. white cherry moya look at the size of it it's massive it's doubled in size in the last two months um, the shepherd avocado now is over four meters the bacon avocado is three meters the um, um, plantain hybrid banana um, is really shot up too bad that the the mother never came back from being destroyed during the storm that we had in January February um, so now her pups are taken over hopper I think it's called hopper banana um, Sophia cherry moya the new reed avocado that I put in the ground the uh, black gold jackfruit that's going to need covering it's been chewed by by um, snails which they always do in winter 
um, and this is the um, kumquat. It's pushing at a lot of growth. hasn't hasn't done much fruiting though in the last year. That's a Teso lychee. The Indian white guava again, with a small crop. But I'm um, excited about the Hawaiian Supreme um, white sapoti that's doubled in size in the last six months, which is great. And it's vertical growth, not horizontal. So we're going to get a lot more fruit up there from that next season. And there's still the last ones hanging on. These will come in uh, winter. Right. Usually these are a summer, early autumn variety. The Nam Roy, the Aman Quava, it's growing nicely. The yellow papaya, which I have to cover if I want it to um, survive. We've got some Japanese mandarins that are ready. Right. These are really delicious, easy to peel. And up here we have a lot of bananas. Look at that rack there. We've got one rack there. Second rack there. And a third rack in there. Three racks. Or bunches, right? We might even get a fourth. And this is all happening in autumn, guys. These all came in autumn. Early autumn and the middle of autumn. So yeah, even in uh, uh, the cooler season, we still get a lot of bananas here. As you have seen again and again, there's another bunch. And there's a couple of more bunches up there in those. Right? In there. All right, enough of the bananas. I make it look so easy, but trust me, many people have had so many problems trying to get bananas of fruit in Melbourne. Now here we have the three meter tall lemon guava, which is so sweet. Let's see if we can get a ripe one. Many of them are on the ground. There's some beauties up there. I can't reach them though. <clears throat> they don't have to be fully ripe. Yeah, that's ripe enough. Right. This one here has been bitten. They get bitten. But there's so many, I really don't care. Mm. Wow. Very sweet. Wow, wow, wow. Mm. Mm. Now here we've, we've got a problem. This is the lemon gold. White sapoti. Whilst we were away, we lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Twenty-one precious white sapotis. See that? Because we were gone. And when we're home, they don't fall. The week before we left, not one fell. The, oh, here's one, it's ready. Before we left for Darwin, none of them were ready. None of them were ready. The, they all fell when we left. As soon as we got on the plane, 21 white sapotis dropped. Can you believe it? Now that, that's what I call, <laughs> that's what I call, grrr, oh, here's another one that's ready. Oh, so we made them, we made a few, it's not all loss, right? And those two are ready also. Yeah, all right. So, oh, I also have to pick these uh, pineapple guavas. Today as well, I don't know how long they've been on the ground. So, um, oops, I'm stepping on them. 
Let me go and get a bowl and get the job started. Also, the um, frost cloth arrived from eBay a day early so we can finish off the job, right? Of um, protecting those trees. But I need clamps. I've run out of clamps. Those clamps there, right? You can use um, zip tie or cable tie, but then you have to rip the frost cloth. You have to pierce it. And I don't want to put holes into this it's bad enough they get pierced anyway from um, the the wind I'll show you hmm I had one that was pierced and I can't remember where it is last year's frost cloth I think it's at the backyard yeah all right guys the sun's out <laughs> gee uh, I'm vet we, we are both very jet lagged today's definitely a, a beautiful enough day to go to the beach but um, I'm jet lagged, guys. I'm seeing double. Very, very um, tired. Sleep deprived. We only got like two hours sleep on the night flight. It was a night flight from 1 a.m. to um, 5 a.m. So I can't even see. I can't see and I can't think. But I really want to go to the beach. These are the, the veggies, silver beet. Um, lettuce, these will have to be pulled out anyway. Eggplants, as you saw, doing good. Um, herbs, lemongrass, silver beet, more silver beet. The um, um, Hillary White uh, custard apple. See, <laughs> I'm trying hard to remember. Uh, oh, and here we have the starling guava the one that's seedless that's doing really well and we have a lot of uh lily koi flowers one two three four and one that's dropped on the ground there five um and i'm sure there's a lot more in there the lily koi has taken over now it's climbing it's planted there it's climbing and replacing the old passion fruit that was there for the last three years. Right, you can see the difference in the leaf. There's one passion fruit leaf, right? And there's the other passion fruit leaf. See how different they look? Yeah. All right, guys. So now I've got to pick up all this mess. Well, this is all wasted now, but there's a lot of fruit ready to fall on the tree here so I'm gonna pick that up oh and before we go um, the uh, Bowen seed, uh, uh, seedling mango I take it that's doing fine I can't see in there but I can see this Paxton prolific custard apple that needs to be watered looks a little dry we didn't get any rain for the whole time we were gone which is not good these need water just like the black sapote needs water so guys that's it Kara Kara blood orange right and Daly's uh, black sapote free gift I got from them that's doing really well I think I've covered everything right so thanks for watching we're back again excited to be back but feeling tired really really tired and we're gonna go and have a, a nap um, and that's the uh, calisthenic or bottle brush ornamental okay guys we're glad to be back again it's hard work. Uh, it, it looks, um, um, what, what do you call it? Fancy. But believe me, it's hard work. It's a lot of hard, um, it's a strain. It's a strain traveling. Uh, going to the airports, going to uh, wherever you're going, right? It's hard work. It's not easy. It's different when you're young. When you're 20 year old, a 20 year old, you can jump like a kangaroo. Uh, as long as you're healthy, not sick, of course. But when you're 60, 
everything's hard everything is hard guys so thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and we'll see you from the next one guys don't forget to go back and check out the backyard which I also filmed and you'll see what's uh, new from back there bye guys